This is my KTM 500 EXC. This is the motorcycle that's gonna take me around the world for the next four to five years. I'm gonna show you today all the modifications I made, why I made them, and why I consider it to be the ultimate motorcycle for me, for where I want to ride, how I want to ride in any country in the world. Welcome to Motor Trek. I'm Paul, you might know me as Round the World Paul or RTW Paul. I'm just about to leave, take my KTM, put it on a plane flight to England. From there, I'm gonna ride the bike from England across to Siberia. I'm gonna divert a little bit, go through the stands, go through the Mongolia, and be on the road for years, but this year, uh, that's the, where the tough riding is gonna be, and for that, the bike is built specifically. I am purposely trying to hit as much dirt as possible. Um, I really don't want to be on the pavement at all. So the bike is built specifically for that. Nice lightweight bike with good fuel range. That will help me go to places that are remote that most motorcycle riders just wouldn't even consider going to. I started doing adventure motorcycling about nine years ago. I've done lots of trips. I've uh, been around the world a few times. Over the last nine years, I've used numerous bikes, XT660s, XR650Rs, DR650s, WR250s, even rode big bikes, Super Tenere. They just didn't feel right. This bike feels right for where I want to take it. The difference between this bike and those, it's just a pure motorcycle. It's, it's a race bike. It wants to go, it wants to have fun, and it wants to have fun, I want to have fun. It's light, it's easy to ride, it's easy to work on. There's nothing about this bike that I don't like. I've taken what I consider some of the good points from all the other bikes I've ridden, and they're on this bike. So this makes it for me the ultimate motorcycle, how I want a motorcycle to be. So why this bike? Why a 2016 500 EXC? Why not a 450 or a 690? 2012 to 2016, there's a few little variances that make this a better travel bike. I can get a bigger gas tank, so I have a longer fuel range. It has a stronger subframe, it has more oil capacity. Because the bike has been out longer, aftermarket support and parts on the shelf in numerous countries around the world, more accessible. So there's a stronger reason to use this bike, even though it is not a 2020, it makes it actually a better motorcycle for the kind of travel that I want to do. The first thing I wanted to get for the bike was a big tank. This is a 5.3 gallon, gives me a lot more range, and I don't need to go looking for gas stations every five minutes. I want to be comfortable. I'm riding, I'm riding distances. I've done over 400,000 kilometers in the last nine years. So I'm tall, I'm almost six foot two. The handlebars on a stock bike are just not in the right position for me. I like the bars to be a little bit higher. I like the flare of the bars to be a little bit different. So that's one of the things that I look to change straight away. Once I know that's right, I need to be sitting comfortably. I need a good seat. The stock seat doesn't work for long distance travel. I need a wider seat, better foam. And in my case, because I ride off road, one that has good grip that holds me on the bike. The stock pegs on this type of bike, because it is a race bike, are small. To make them more comfortable, these are more than double the size of a stock peg. They still come from KTM, but these are rally pegs, so they're great for standing all day long. And there will be days when I'll be riding and all I will be doing is standing up. Suspension is another thing you need to look at. This is the six days version, not the standard EXC. So there's a few upgrades, but even so, I upgraded the springs and the valving on the forks and on the shock. The bike originally wasn't set up for this bigger tank, which adds weight, for the luggage, which adds weight. And me, I'm bigger. I'm bigger than the average rider. The wheels that come on the bike stock are good, but I'm going to remote places, so I want to add some strength. It adds a little bit of weight, but I, primarily I want to add strength. These Warp 9 Elite rims are a stronger version, and extra heavy-duty spokes and a unique feature is stainless nipples. A lot of motocross bikes come with aluminum nipples, so this actually adds strength to the wheel as well. I also add a larger brake rotor. I add a supermoto rotor. Reason being, I'm carrying additional weight, so I need additional stopping power. And I put this on almost every single bike that I build, 
and it saved literally my life more than a few times. It's a cheap upgrade, but it's 100% worth it. Tires, I look for a mix between durability, longevity, and grip. These are from a company called Motor Z. It's a new tire called a Fatty, and it does all those things, and uh, life on this tire is probably in excess of 5,000 miles, 8,000 kilometers. I didn't grow up riding motocross, so I like not having the wind blowing in my face. So I have a rally screen. It's attached to a rally tower. It's made by a company called Motor Minded. This you've probably seen on Dakar bikes. It deflects a lot, not everything, but a lot of the wind. And it just helps you ride and not get as tired if you're riding long days. Integrated into it is navigation. I have two sets of navigation, one from Trailtech and one from Garmin. There's a reason for different versions. The reason is one may fail. One may fail because it loses power. One may fail because it loses a satellite signal. I use one primarily as a dash and I use the other one for navigation. I have the Garmin set up if I'm standing a lot at an angle that I can look down and I can see the screen perfectly. The rest of the time, all I'm using, I'm using this for basically for, for speed, for standard things that you would expect to see in a dashboard. But this is a race bike, it doesn't have a dashboard, so therefore this is now my dashboard. The lighting on a stock bike, as most people know, is, is not the best. So I have a double headlight setup, and this puts out about five or six times more than the stock setup would. I know, don't ride at night. But if you do get caught riding at night, it's nice to be able to see where you're going. And this as an upgrade is huge. This turns night into day. Handlebar setup. None of this is stock. I have hand guards, protection. In integrated in hand guards, I have mirrors. So if I'm riding on the road, I have a mirror. If I'm off the road, I can put them out of the way so they won't get broken. Upgraded grips. Upgraded levers. This is a chain oiler. Little rotation creates pressure, forces drips of oil down to the chain. Upgraded handlebars. Here is a voltmeter and integrated into it, two USBs, so I can run a cable into my bag and if I need to charge my camera, I can do that. Spoke about the GPS already. Steering stabilizer. Risers to lift the bars up a little bit. Cable guides. I need to protect the bike because I ride off road. I'm gonna drop the bike. My hands are protected. These are ridiculously strong hand guards. Radiator. I need protection on that so nothing coming in can puncture the radiator. The exhaust. This is carbon fiber, so protect the exhaust. The bash plate to protect the underneath of the motorcycle. If I drop the motorcycle, the hand guards will work, but if something hits the motor, this is a billet cover, stronger than stock. On the rear end, the rear brake rotor, a little bit of protection there, and the caliper as well needs to be protected. Brake snake is about $3 worth of parts from a hardware store. It's just a little bit of added protection, just to stop your brake lever getting bent outwards by any brush that might go behind there. If I fall and drop the bike, I don't need to worry about it. I can just pick it up and carry on because I know I'm covered. This bike has a Kickstarter, the new bikes don't. I kill my battery, I can kickstart my bike. I drop the bike in a river, I can purge the water out of the motor. KTMs look cool, but I wanted to make it my bike, so I added some graphics. I worked with Rocky Mountain and Attack Graphics, and I had an image in my head, and we worked together, and we came up with this. This material on the gas tank, this is vented, so it's not gonna peel itself off. The gearing on the bike is 1548. The stock, I don't remember, but I know it wasn't 1548. And this suits my kind of riding, my style, how I ride, the speed I want to ride and where I want to ride. And it gives me decent fuel economy as well. Along with the upgrade of the Dirt Tricks sprockets, I have also upgraded the chain as well. This needs to be something I can just forget about for 20,000 miles. Also on here, there's some protection. Um, for the swing arm 
and for the chain slider, these are both upgrades as well. And because of the additional weight on the bike, a much stronger side stand. To make life easy, if I get a flat, hopefully I don't get a flat, but to be able to pull the rear wheel out, the adjusters are set so I don't need to keep making an adjustment on the chain. I can actually pull it out and they will lock into place and a little handle to make life easier just to be able to pull the axle out. Fuel filter, this is aftermarket and also the angle that the fuel line comes out of the tank. Protection here in case the chain snapped and this stops the chain going through the engine case. This is where the chain oiler comes down, trips onto the chain. And if I drop the bike on its side to stop getting punctured, there's extra protection here. And then the big thing is the bash plate. Obviously covering the hole underneath the motor and the added bonus, that's where I keep my tools. Dirt bikes don't come with strong subframes per se. So to add a little bit more structure and also to make the luggage sit on the bike better and make it easier to tie down tighter. To me, a rack was a definite that I needed. Another upgrade on the rear is I run a cush drive. This helps with longevity of the motor and it's cushioning for the transmission main shaft. The bike's gonna get hot in the tracks and places that I ride. It cools down from stock pretty good, but I added a trail tech system on here that I can actually dive in and I drop the temperature down by five degrees. So that this is a way for me to make the fan turn on sooner. The Boyson is basically just an upgraded water pump. It just has better internal components and it, it helps with the flow. It flows a little bit better than stock. All the coolant radiator hoses from a company called Samco, they're upgraded, they're race quality silicone and it's just added peace of mind. Rear turn signal, thing on a KTM that always kind of melts and gets burnt on the right hand side. Change that to just a short turn signal that's inboard and fall down the crash, it's not gonna get broken off. A couple of things that you can't see under the seat, there's a lithium battery, better than stock, and a little bit lighter. And in the tank from California Cycle Works, an upgraded fuel pump. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. It's a race bike. Race bikes, service, oil changes. I'm not going on a race, I'm not racing around the world. KTM will tell you, 15 hours, 500 miles, change the oil, do the valves every thousand miles or so. Does that mean like every other day I have to change the oil? No, because I'm not racing around the world. You can extend that. Loads and loads and loads of riders before me have extended that. Not an issue at all. So what makes it even easier? The bike carries 1.5 liters of oil and I need to do an oil change carry an extra oil change. That's that, that's easy, done, forget it. Filters, carry some extra filters, easy. Clean the air filter, again, easy. These things are five, 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes. To me, that little bit of time is worth taking to do the little bit of, it's preventive maintenance. You have to do it on every motorcycle, but this motorcycle, I can take anywhere, anywhere. And to me, that little bit of extra effort and maintenance is worth it. It really is. The one thing I didn't cover was the luggage. I'm gonna cover that in another episode, but hopefully I covered everything else on the motorcycle you wanted to know. Any questions, ask them in the comments, and I'll see you on the road somewhere.